Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come a thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Chad Morrison was a fretful patient as he sat with an injured foot propped up on a chair in front of him and stared impatiently through the window of the crossbar ranch house toward the break in the distant trail which indicated the entrance to his spread. Finally, his wife, Dora, approached his side and spoke. Come now, Chad. It ain't no use sitting there with your eyes glued to the trail. Ned Grayson will be coming back with the boys in his own good time, and he'll bring our money back safe and sound. We can trust Ned. Who said I didn't trust him? But things can happen between here and Bighorn, especially when a man's carrying a small fortune in cash. Chad Morrison... I've never seen the likes of you. When we don't have troubles, you sit around and worry up some. Why, you're lucky to have a friend like Ned Grayson. I guess you're right, Dora. Ned's the right sort of neighbor to have at that. Don't know what I'd have done hurting my foot and all just when the crossbar had the biggest drive ever, getting several thousand head of cattle over to Bighorn. Of course, Chad. And Ned stepped right in and offered to take charge of everything for you. Sure. But I sort of expected him back yesterday... Or at least this morning. Now it's almost sunset. No sign of them yet. But Chad, Bighorn's nigh on to 50 miles from here. And Ned's not one to wear those cattle down to skin and bones getting them there. Now you just stop your fretting and I'll help you over to the table. Supper's almost ready. <laughs> All right. Doggone if you have no way of making a man feel like a regular worry ward over nothing, Dora. I reckon Ned will take care of things, all right? Of course he will. Come on now, get up and lean on me. <laughs> I'd sure feel mighty helpless for a fact if I really had to lean on a little mite of a female like you. <laughs> but I guess you can help me some. Take it easy now. God sarn this no good foot of mine anyhow. <laughs> Save your breath for a hop and chat. Here's the chair. Be careful. Uh, uh, thanks, Dora. You're a right smart little nurse at that. Glad to hear you admit it. Where's Janie? Mrs. Jenkins come by and took Jane to town. They'll be coming home now any minute. Now, Dora, Red Rock ain't no place for a little girl like Janie to go to. All them rough cowpokes and all. Oh, there you go again, worrying. 
Chad, most of them rough cowpokes are friends of yours. And there isn't a man in Red Rock who'd do harm to a six-year-old, and you know it. Well, I guess you're right again, Dora. But I don't like Virginia to go to Red Rock unless she's with me or you. She's just as safe with Mrs. Jenkins, Chad. Now you just settle yourself there while I go to the kitchen oh, and... That's them, Dora. The boys have got back at last. Didn't I tell you? I better put on another plate. Ned Grayson will be staying to supper. Yep. Ned and me will have a lot of talking to do. It's sure a relief to know they're... That must be him now. Let Ned in, Dora. Calm yourself, Chad. I'm going to let him in. Evening, Miss Morrison. I gotta see the boss right away. Oh, it's you, Jim. Come in. We thought it was Ned. Good thing you got here. I was beginning to think I'd lost a good foreman. Most of my cow hands to boot. Well, we would have got back sooner, Mr. Morrison, only... Well, they... They was trouble. What, what kind of trouble, Jim? Yeah. What trouble are you talking about? Well, speak up, man. Well, I... I don't know how to tell you it. Well, we... We got the cattle to Bighorn. Go on. Where's Ned Grayson? He's gone. Gone with all your money that was paid for them cattle. Oh, Jim, there must be some mistake. Oh, wait, wait. Now, Jim, say that again and tell it straight. Well, it's true. You can ask any of the boys and they'll bear me out. Grayson went to the bank with a cattle buyer to get the money. And he was to meet us at the cafe later. Never showed up. But Grayson's my friend. My neighbor. Uh, you must have missed him. Oh, yes. He'll be coming along later on. No, he won't, ma'am. What... What makes you so sure, Jim? Well, the boys got restless waiting, so I took Hank with me. We went looking for Ned Grayson. Well? Well, Mr. Morrison, Grayson got the money all right and took a train headed for St. Louis that passed through Bighorn half an hour after he collected. He was seen getting on that train. And the cattle buyer had a receipt signed by Ned for all the cattle money. Oh, no. No, he... He couldn't do such a thing to us. I'm sorry, ma'am, but it's true. Nearly everything we own was tied up in them cattle... Now that low-down, yellow-livered coyote has gone off with the money. Oh, Chad. That was your money, Dora. Janie's money as well as mine. You talk about the fine friends and neighbors we got. Ned Grayson was supposed to be our friend. He was one of our neighbors. Oh, Chad, just because... Now, wait, Ned... Dora, wait. I know what you're going to say, and I don't want to hear it. I depend on a friend to do a favor. And he steals nearly everything we got. Well, from now on, we got no friends, you hear? From now on, we'll have nothing to do with anybody. And you keep our little Janie away from all those smirking, backstabbing neighbors. We'll all stay away. Well, Mr. Morrison, I... You get out of here. From now on, keep everybody off my spread or you'll be fired. Well, get out. Get out, I say. Friends, there ain't no such thing. From here on, I'm making my way alone. <laughs> Chad Morrison kept his word. For five long years with his wife and daughter, he lived in seclusion on his ranch, hating all men, despising all friendly overtures from his neighbors. His wife, Dora, by nature a friendly and neighborly type of woman, became morose and silent, realizing that Chad's love for her and little Janie was strong, but not strong enough to overcome the deep hatred that rankled every moment of his life. For Janie's sake, she tried to reason with Chad. Chad... You must see what this is doing to Janie. She needs companionship. She doesn't understand why she No can't... use to talk about it, Dora. We're getting along right well. Better than most, in fact, without bothering with other people. It's up to you to make Janie understand. Now she no longer protested. She knew it was hopeless, that hating had become an obsession with Chad. Even Janie had tried in her childish way to break the bond which made her feel different from other people. Daddy, why can't I go over to play with Susie Jenkins like I used to? Because you don't need Susie Jenkins or anybody else to get along and be happy, Janie. We got the biggest spread in these parts. We ain't beholden to no one and never will be. But, Daddy, Susie and me were friends. Can't I have her for my friend, please? Honey, nobody's ever really a friend. That's just a word people use to get on the good side of somebody. So they can get something from him one way or another. You just forget about Susie Jenkins. And so Chad Morrison wove a wall around his little family, keeping them away from the friendliness and warmth that others were eager to offer. Little Janie eased her loneliness often by riding her pony down the lane to the trail to watch people go by. One day, 
The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode the trail past the entrance to the Crossbar Ranch. Look, Himosabe. Little girl over there on pony. Yes. She uh, seems to be watching us closely. Yes, she's curious about my mask. Hello. Hello. How? We'll stop and speak to her a moment, Toto. Oh, uh, oh, oh, easy, steady. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh. Well, that's a mighty fine pony you have there. He's the best pony in the world. Why do you have that black thing over your face, mister? Are you an outlaw? No, I'm not an outlaw. It, is that man really an Indian? <laughs> uh, me, Tonto. Uh, me, Indian. Uh, what's your name? My name's Janie. Janie Morrison. Will you stay and talk to me a little bit? I never get to talk to anybody. No? Why not? My daddy don't want me to talk to people. He says all people are bad. Are all people bad, like he says? Well, no, Janie. I haven't found it so. Uh, maybe your daddy was just fooling you. Oh, no, he wasn't. He don't let Mama talk to people either. And sometimes Mama cries because she wants to have people to talk to her. I bet she'd like to have you and Tonto to talk to, too. <laughs> she'd like you. I do. <laughs> Thank you, Janie. We're glad you do. Isn't that good? Tell me, uh, is your father's name Chad Morrison? Yes, how did you know? Did you know Daddy? No, but I've heard about him, Janie. I uh, didn't know he had a little girl like you. He's the nicest Daddy in the whole world. But, well, I, I wish he'd let me have a friend... Mama says people should have friends. Well, that's right, Janie. They should. Is, is Tonto your friend, mister? <laughs> yes, Janie, he is. And him my friend, too. I can make believe you're both my friends, too, can I? Will you care? Oh, we won't mind at all. In fact, we'll really be your friends, if you say so, Janie. Oh, will you, honest? Mm. Oh, thank you. It'll be our secret. Well... I have to go now. Daddy will be sending after me, and he'll find out. Goodbye. 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 Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. And that nice little girl, Kimasabi. Yes, Toto. A very lonely little girl, too. Uh, what you hear about her father? Chad Morrison is a self-sufficient, bitter man, Toto. He was wronged by a friend years ago. Since then, he's turned against everybody. Uh, that's not good. No, and it's especially hard on his wife and child. Other people want to be their friends, but Chad Morrison won't have it. Someday, Tonto, he may need the friendship and help of his neighbors. Then he'll realize the harm he's done to himself and his family. A week went by. As fall approached, the weather was hot and dry. Leaves lung hung brown and crisp on the trees, and wheat ready for harvesting stood tall and dry in the fields. It was dusk when Chad Morrison, his wife, and little Janie sat down to supper at the Crossbar Ranch House. Consign it, Dora, this hot, dry weather is unnatural for this time of year. I don't like it one bit. I reckon it won't last much longer, Chad. At least a bit of a breeze sprung up this afternoon. That don't help none. In fact, it ain't even good for cooling the body off. Like a breath out of a hot furnace. What's unnatural mean, Daddy? It means something we ain't used to. Now, you just go on with your supper, Janie. Never mind the questions. Yes, Daddy. As I was saying, Dora, it's hard on the stock, as well as on the crops. I reckon if it keeps up, we'll... I'll see who it is. Well, howdy, Mr. Morrison. I come to check Jim, my... what in tarnation you doing here? I thought you was out tending Well, this... I come back because I thought you ought to know. The whole ridge the east of here is burning like blazes, stretched out for miles. What? The ridge on fire? Yeah, and the wind's pushing it further north along the ridge. Well, you dumb skull, why waste time coming to me? You ought to know what to do. Get every ranch hand we got. Get over to the range at the foot of that ridge before every head of cattle we own starts stampeding. Yes, but if I take them all over there and the wind changes, that fire's liable Hold to... Hold stand there arguing. Get the boys and get going. All right, Mr. Morrison. I'll get them all over there right away. The whole of the East Ridge is on fire. They have to get to them cattle before the critters run wild and we lose half of them. But he said something about if the wind changes. No, it won't. It's blowing the fire northward along the ridge. Chad, 
What if it did change? Well, I reckon if it did and started blowing this way, we'd have a mighty poor chance of saving any part of the crossbar spread. We'd be burned out clean. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now, to continue our story, Jim, the foreman of the Crossbar Ranch, went to Chad Morrison with the startling news that a great fire was raging along the East Ridge, about five miles to the east of the ranch house. Chad ordered Jim to take all the available ranch hands over to the foot of the ridge, where the main herd of the Crossbar cattle were grazing, in order to prevent a stampede. A short time later, in their camp a few miles away, Tonto roused the Lone Ranger, who was sleeping. Kimasabi. Uh, Kimasabi. What? Uh, what's the matter, Tonto? Look. Big fire on ridge to east. Hey. That is a big fire. Stretches for miles. Wind blowing at north. Long ridge. Look like. Yes, Tonto. If the wind should change and blow westward, it would... Saddle Silver and Scout, Tonto. He saddled them already, Kimasabi. Good. Come, Silver. Scout. Steady, Silver. We ride to ridge. Yes. The crossbar herd is near there. Come Silver. Get him up, Scout. Oh, 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 Easy, boy. Easy now. Heard go that way. Yes. Someone used good judgment, Toto. They've driven the cattle southward where the fire on the ridge has already burned out. Fire and smoke make cattle plenty nervous. Yes, I know. We ride that way. They may still have trouble and we'll be on hand to help. One silver. Get him up, scout. The Lone Ranger Tonto reined up a short distance away and watched the crossbar cow hands as they strove unceasingly to keep the frightened cattle under control. The foreman's voice was heard above the rest. Don't let up on him, men. Yeah. That man, foreman, maybe. Yes, come on. I'm going to speak to him. Come, Silver. Come, Scout. Oh, 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 Silver. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 oh. We came to offer help. Well, thanks, stranger, but the crossbar don't take help from nobody, and it... Why, you're mad. Well, never mind that now. You need all the help you can get, and we're willing to do it. Jim, Jim, look behind you. To the north. The wind's changed. What the... Hey, you're right. Fire's creeping down the ridge to the west behind us. Yeah, right towards the whole crossbar spread. Chad Morrison will be burned out lock, stock, and barrel or something he done to stop it. Listen, Hank, I can't take the men away from this herd no matter what. Well, we got to warn Morrison, even if there ain't anything he can do to stop that fire. You go tell him. Get there as quick as you can. Get going. All right, Jim. Get up there. Get up there. Jim, how many men are at the ranch with Morrison? Not a dead blamed one. They're all here. Then Chad Morrison needs help and plenty of it. But see here, Mr. Morrison Tonto, don't want no... go to the South Valley. Get some of the farmers there. Uh -huh. I'll ride to the Newton and Hawkins ranches. They have plenty of ranch hands. we we'll meet at Morrison's. Hurry. Uh -huh. Get off, Scout. You won't get help from me, the Newton or Hawkins. I'll get their help. But Mr. Morrison raised thunder. There are others in his family who deserve help, regardless of Chad Morrison. One silver... Racing against time, the Lone Ranger rode at breakneck speed along the trail of the Newton Ranch. The Galleon White Stallion made every effort to respond even more to the masked man's ringing cry. Come on, Silver! Hurry, boy! Faster, Silver! Silver seemed to sense the urgent need for haste, and he covered the miles without once slackening his speed, until finally, the Lone Ranger drew rein near the corral of the Newton Ranch, where most of the ranch hands were gathered to watch the leaping flames of the distant fire. Oh, boy! Oh, oh Silver! Hey, look! What now? Man, a light. Look at that horse! Hey. What do you want here? What's the idea? Well, who are you? I'm Bill Newton, owner of this spread. That's who. And you're just the man I came to see. I've got to talk fast. You've seen that fire. You must know which way it's heading. Sure. Looks like it might be heading for the crossbar. It is. What? Morrison's men are with the herd. He needs your help, Newton. Why, that ornery coyote. If he sent you here after the way he's acted towards everybody who Why, wanted to... Quiet, listen to me. 
Chad Morrison didn't send me here. But I know he needs help, and I came to get it. Well, you ain't going to get it here. Now, listen to me, all of you. I came here because I thought you were men, real men. Perhaps I'm mistaken. Because men in this country don't stand by and watch while a common foe brings complete ruin to a neighbor. Chad Morrison refused your friendship because he was hurt by a friend. You haven't the courage to help him when he's down and prove that your friendship would be worthwhile. Well, well, why do you want to help Morrison? Because I know it's the right thing to do. In this territory, neighbor must help neighbor, or none will survive. Forget he's Chad Morrison. Just remember he's a neighbor who prove yourselves men, but courage enough to do what's right, regardless of the circumstances. Well, I'll leave it up to the boys. What do you say, boys? Do we go? Yeah. yeah. Why not? Good. Why not? Uh, hurry up, all of you. Get to your horses. Now, if we can get the Hawkins men to I help. I can handle Hawkins, stranger. They'll help. Hit leather, boys. And somebody bring my brown. Here's your brown, Bill. Yeah. All right, men. Let's get going. Go on, Silver. Get up there. Through the efforts of the Lone Ranger and Tonto, nearly a hundred men came to the crossbar ranch and were working frantically to stem the onrushing flames. Livestock were taken to safety. Outbuildings were wetted down. A large trench was dug. And the sweating men were ever conscious of the masked man on the spirited white stallion as he moved among them, helping, suggesting, advising. Finally, the Lone Ranger realized that more drastic means would have to be taken. He raised his voice and called to the men. Men! Men, listen to me! Our last resort is to start a backfire at this point. Get torches and... Oh, oh, oh. So you're the man responsible for bringing these men here. But well, I didn't ask for help. Quiet, you. Get torches and spread out to the wheat field. Work fast. Now, see here. You can't set fire to my wheat. If the wind changes again, the fire won't get this far. No masked army is going to ruin my crops. Get started, men, and hurry. Now, you listen to me. Shut up, you. The fields to the north of the crossbar spread... Will have to be sacrificed too. Well, that belongs to Hal Jenkins, and that's all he's got, Mister. Go ahead and burn it, Mister. I am Hal Jenkins, and it is all I got. But Chad Morrison's got a lot more to lose than I have. Tell him to go ahead. Thanks, Jenkins. Morrison, there's something that should start you thinking. All right, get the torches and start the backfires. Now hurry. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Who are you? Why did you come? Oh, 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 oh Jim. What's happened to the herd? The herd's all right, Mr. Morrison. But I thought you ought to know that Mrs. Morrison and Janie are on the way to the Jenkins farm in the buckboard. I met them on the trail and she wouldn't turn back. What? Dora and Janie going to Jenkins? Yep. But I told her not to leave the ranch house unless the fire... Jim, the big fire will be reaching that trail before long. There goes the backfire all along the line. Jim, what did you say about Mrs. Morrison and her little daughter? Driving the buckboard on the trail, going to the Jenkins farm. Jim, I'm going after them. You'll go together, Morrison. Hello, wait for me at the ranch house. Ah, ready, Morrison? Yes. Yes, I'm ready. One silver. Get up! Side by side, the Lone Ranger and Chad Morrison raced along the trail, each hoping against hope the buckboard had gotten through safely. As they rode, the Ranger noticed with satisfaction that the backfire had already left a wide margin of safety between the rest of the crossbar spread and the raging menace on the ridge. Halfway along the trail, Chad Morrison suddenly shouted, The buckboard! I see it stop just ahead. Yes, I see it too. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Cora, Jania, are you all right? Chad, oh, Chad. Daddy, I want to go home. You'll be all right now, Jenny. Oh, Mama, look. There's my friend. Thank heaven the fire missed you, Dora. Chad, it... It was more than I could stand. The way you wouldn't send for help and all. I was leaving you, Chad. And I wasn't coming back. But we, we had help, Dora. They said a backfire, and it worked. The crossbar's out of danger now. That backfire? I wondered. Chad, if it hadn't been for that, then the big fire would have caught us. 
It was the backfire in your own wheat field that saved them, Chad. And to think that I tried to get you not to leave the No, work. wait. Forget that, Chad. Just be thankful they're safe. Stranger, I guess I've been a fool. I got a lot to be thankful for tonight. Especially for friends like... like Hal Jenkins, who let himself be burned out to save the crossbar. But I'll make it up to him and to the others, too. You wait and see. Oh, Chad. Do you really mean that? Daddy, does that mean I can have friends like Susie Jenkins and, and the meth man? Yes, honey. That's what I mean. Well, stranger, if there's something I could ever do to repay you... Chad, uh, Chad, I'll be repaid if you'll just remember two very wise sayings by one who knows our weaknesses. No man is sufficient unto himself and love thy neighbor. Well, adios. All right, big fella. Mon Silver! Who is that man, Chad? Why, Mama, didn't you know? He's my friend. Love thy neighbor, he said. Dora, will you go back with me? We've got a raft of neighbors at the ranch, probably waiting around for victuals and coffee. I need you there beside me when I... I ask him to be my friends again. Will you come back? Oh, Chad. You, you know I will. story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Thank you.